योग कर्मसु कौशल Namaskar myself professor dr priti mayani from hrdc i would like to welcome you all on behalf of hrdc gujarat university today we have a eminent great personality with all of us uh, mahesh rajguru ji so i would like to welcome you uh, mahesh ji uh, on behalf of hrdc gujarat university and uh, i would also like to welcome you all the participants um let us uh, go through the brief uh, introduction of mahesh ji so uh, he has uh, completed his phd uh, at uh, bhavnagar university in 1991 and the title was a comparative study of over and under achievers in mathematics so uh, he has done his uh, msc in organic chemistry bhavnagar university uh, then uh, completed uh, his mad uh, and disf diploma in information and system management uh, aptech computers in 1997 so uh, friends uh, he had worked as reader um, from 1996 to 1998 uh, at bhavnagar university uh, his uh, first area was uh, research teaching research teaching methodology educational psychology measurement and evaluation educational statistics and uh, successfully he guided um, md students uh, for their uh, research work so uh, he was also a principal trainer uh, in training college of bhavnagar undergraduate college of education uh, he guided pre service higher school teachers uh, academic and administrative head of the uh, teachers training colleges so uh, he had uh, very huge experience in the teaching learning field just now uh, he is uh, doing his work uh, in usa university uh, news has also published their uh, research articles over 40 years of experience in education field uh, from community college to master students uh, taught master students for 2 years uh, he developed instructional materials for masters students in research methodology topics and uh, his mastery in methods of research historical survey case study developmental study and all so uh, two science related lessons were broadcast from all india radio uh, also so he has uh, done his presentations in various uh, universities uh, in india and abroad the in india so uh, friends today i again welcome uh, professor mahesh rajguru ji and uh, i'm sure that uh, we will have a fruitful session uh, with mahesh rajguru ji thank you thank you one and all namaste today we are going to talk about choice based credit system uh, i'm not going to talk about uh, the credit system we are going to exactly apply like this in india uh, but i'm just talking about <coughs> a little bit i know about the usa because i'm talking right now from the usa that what kind of credit system uh, we have in the united states and once we understand this i think more or less our choice based credit system may be similar to this when we add our swadeshi flavor to this one uh, adjustment modifications what we can imply what we can do uh, what is the indian culture how it fits with the colleges universities schools once we determine that uh will go that so i'm just trying to give you a little idea about the credit system and uh, once it applies in india hopefully they are going to modify lots of things 
Uh, so I'm not saying that whatever I'm saying right now as a part of this lecture and a choice-based credit system, uh, it might not be happening as is, whatever I'm talking, but I'm just trying to give you the feel about the credit system. So let's try to get the feel and try to understand about uh, the credit system. Uh, I'm trying to talk about the flexibility of the credit system once it is going to apply. Uh, let's take a hypothetical example to understand. Say for example, there is a college A and here is maybe in the same city or maybe at the different place or online uh, college B and a requirement for the three years graduation is to have the 30 credits so one student is taking 25 credits with this college and that is the base college and that student has taken five credits with the college b so if this college a is accepting the credit of b then 25 plus 5 he got the he or she got the 30 credits and the student can be graduate so by this example you may understand that there is a little more flexibility in the choice based credit system uh, in compared to whatever the system exists in here is kind of closed system the credit system is going to be kind of open end system so students will get more opportunity students will get more choices and as we move forward down the road we'll find out how this is going to happen so <clears throat> let's think about a student is taking classes for the first semester and in the first semester student has decided to take 12 credits so what do i mean by 12 credits <clears throat> each college each school each university will decide uh, the credit load the credit hours for their classes that say for example oh this is the syllabus for the hindi class and we can give four credit hours for this class so hindi a student is taking 12 credits in the first semester so the student is taking four credit hour class for hindi class four credit hour class for english class four credit hours for the math class at the end of semester he will be done or she will be done with 12 credits so this is how the credit works so when we talk about the credit system a student has opportunity to pursue course as per choice it is lot more flexible system as i said earlier it is an open-end system, not the closed system like we exist nowadays. Um, in some of the school university, we consider with the marks or percentage system, uh, that is the barrier to the mobility. Uh, if they move from one college to another college, one university to another university, uh, the mark system, percentage system uh, might be a little barrier to them. Uh, the credit system promotes vertical mobility. Uh, whatever system we are applying nowadays, uh, it doesn't promote vertical mobility a lot. It does promote a horizontal mobility in most of the cases. Now let's try to understand what I'm talking about. If somebody's confused, oh, what is this credit and what is going on? so let's take one example from our day-to-day -day life regarding the currency or banking say for example in your one bank account you have ten thousand rupees in the other bank you have twenty thousand rupees so ten thousand rupees other bank you have twenty thousand rupees how much money you have total of thirty thousand just like that in this credit system, we can refer to this credit system just like a, it can uh, common currency. That okay, I did five credit in this college, I have 25 credits in with the other college, college say college B, total together I got 30 credits. So I can graduate, 30 is the hypothetical number. 
it can be determined by later on college, schools, universities, and so on. So this is one simple example, just like you have money in two different places or two different banks and some money, say for example, in the stock market. And if you say that, oh, totally, I have 10,000 here, 20,000 here, 5,000 here, and this is the total amount I have. Similarly, uh, that is like, a, <clears throat> we are talking about the credits in education. That is one thing. Now, secondly, and next step, once we understand what is this credit system, let me <clears throat> do this again, because uh, it might be complicated for some of you, not all of you, but let me repeat this one more time. Credit based system has to deal with some number of credits. Say for example, if I'm a student in education and if I'll take four credit class for the educational statistics, four credit class for the educational psychology, four credit class for the measurement and evaluation, evaluation, I'm sorry, and I got 12 credits at the end of semester. So I just keep going adding numbers. And once the number achieves whatever the determine 30 credits, 40 credits, 50 credits by university, uh, the student can be graduated. Now let me move from credit to another criteria that that is called transfer of credit. Credit can be transferred. Again, I'll use this example of currency. You have 10,000 rupees in bank A, and you want to transfer 10,000 or 10,000 rupees to the bank B, you can do that. We know how to do this either online or by stepping into the bank, we can do that. Similarly, in the college, university schools, credit can be transferred that, okay, I have five credit in my math class. I'm asking to this university, are you going to accept this five credit? The other university will tell you, oh yeah, we can take that credit. And this credit goes over here and I got the five math credit. Now I don't have to take the five math credit class in this college or university. I already got it before I got the admission in that university. So simply speaking, it can be transferred just like currency. Let's take another example of the currency. Say for example, uh, if you are living in India and after some time you decided to move to the Japan or America or somewhere else. Now you have Indian rupees with you and you request the reserve bank that, oh, I have this much amount of money and I want to take my money to United States or I want to take my money to Japan. And there is a process, if that is done from rupees, we can get US dollars or any other currencies we are looking for. The similarly, uh, the educational credit can be transferred. Now, when we talk about the credit can be transferred, uh, if the receiving university is agreeing to accept the credit then and only then the credit can be transferred. If the receiving university is not accepting the credit, it cannot be transferred. Now, what do I mean by that? I'll go back to the, again, that currency. That okay, I want to transfer some money from United States to India. I can do that. But if certain Bank of India is not accepting the transfer, they will tell, oh, you can do that. It is technically correct, but we don't accept that. We don't do that transfer. So credit can be transferred if receiving institution agrees that we accept that credit. If they say, oh, we don't take these three credits, we take this credit, we don't take this credit, that might be happening. So down the road in India, what is going to happen? we can see the transfer agreement between university to universities between college and university between college to college now what do i mean by this it's a little more complicated 
once you understand it is not complicated but let me try to explain as much as i can what do i mean by uh, the transferring and receiving say for example a student is applying to the medical school in the kerala university or university of delhi or whatever then kerala university will have that standardized technique that okay we accept the credits from gujarat university we accept the credits from delhi university we accept the credits from x university y university and z university so they have a list of the university that they are receiving or going to accept because kerala university has agreement with gujarat university uh, university of delhi and so on uh, if somebody comes out from the some private university like i don't know the name say for example a university is a private university and student goes to the medical school or medical college to the kerala university oh this is my credit from the private university the name of university is this and kerala university will say no we don't have any agreement with that university we don't know what is their curriculum and we don't accept that credit so simply speaking this is what i'm saying that down the road in india uh, we will see the agreement between two colleges between amongst many colleges amongst college and university uh, amongst high school and colleges that okay this is the list of the university list of the college we take their courses we take their credits and if you are not in this list we will not accept the credits so down the road we are going to see this scenario that uh, there will be some transfer agreement amongst university amongst college am between college and university and so on so uh, that is one thing secondly uh, most of the universities are having here a limit to accept the credit uh, they will not accept more than that what do i mean by limit to accept the credit again i'll go back to the currency say for example if you have this bank you want to transfer and this bank you have money this bank will tell you that oh you can transfer money from here to here that's fine but we will take up to fifty thousand. that's the maximum all other you need to deposit at your own not the direct transfer just like that if this is the university it has some maximum limit oh we can take the credit from any university listed with us but how much credit we will take we'll take 30 credits only if you want to be a graduate you need 100 credit hours and we'll take 30 from others that's it 70 you have to study here so that's the restriction put by the receiving university that okay we cannot take more than and here in united states most of the universities are having that kind of restrictions that okay we'll take you in we'll take your credit but up to how much 30 credits you need 80 credits to graduate with this college or university we'll take up to 30 credits once 30 credits we received it that's it 50 credits you have to do it here right now in this medical school in this engineering school we cannot accept that credit so second thing we need to keep in mind down the road it is going to happen that there will be a limit of accepting transfer from college or university uh, other than that <clears throat> I'm doing a little more with the medical colleges sometime here. So this is what happens. Uh, let's take another example. I'm talking about the transfer of the credit. One student wants to be a, a, a uh, get an admission in a medical college. The medical college is accepting transfer up to 20 credits and they got the transfer of the 20 credits and they will say that okay if you want to get into this you must have you need to have the organic chemistry credit from any listed university if you don't have organic chemistry 
then you need to take this class first before you get admission into medical school. So each medical school has their own prerequisite that, okay, we'll take 30 credits, but out of 30 credits, three credit must be organic chemistry, five credit must be a biology and so on to move forward. So this is what I'm talking about. And we talk a little bit about the credit system. Now let's move forward and talk a little bit about GPA. That is the grade point average. And I need to go back to the credit system. Now I'll try to summarize whatever we talked in this lecture at this moment regarding the credit system. Say for example, there is one college. It is a three year undergraduate college and students are required to do 60 credit hours to get 60 credit hours. And they are accepting from other college university up to 20 credits. So the student is bringing 20 credits, giving them to the college. The college or university will say that, oh, that's fine. You got the 20 credits even before you step into the college or university. Now, how about reminder of the 40 credits? You have to study here in this college, in the university and the students are going to study in that university or in that college for other 40 credits. Once the student is done with their 40 credits, he already bought 20 credits from other college. He studied 40 college with this 20 plus 40, 60. You are undergraduate, you are graduate. This is your diploma. That is one thing. Unfortunately, I did not study a lot the new education system in India. But when I was looking at the overview, this is one thing I find out good about the system we are going to imply. And this is a good thing. Um, I'll stick with the same example that student needs uh, 60 credits at the end to graduate. And say, for example, if student is able to do up to 30 credits, what happens to a student? A student is nothing like, no. It looks like to me apparently that they will get diploma for that, not the degree. So they will not waste their education a single credit. Whatever the education they are getting, they, will, they might be getting something for that. If not degree, maybe diploma. Um, another thing while I was talking about the credit system, the another positive aspect of the credit system is the flexibility. In uh, current rigid system, there is little less flexibility. In the new system, there will be a lot more flexibility. What do you mean of flexibility? Oh, I like psychology. I want to take some credit in psychology. I like chemistry. I like music. I like physical education. You can take that credit and you can earn a diploma or degree depending upon what is the requirement prerequisite etc for that call as or this one okay now based on the i hope that at least we got little feel about the credit that's good enough um, uh, so now let's change the topic and get into the gpa called grade point average so uh, I'll repeat the example. One student wants to get admission into the engineering college to be an engineer. So the engineer college will tell the students that, okay, first thing we look at the credit that you need to have certain credit and we'll take it. And students will tell them, okay, I have 20 credits, this much in math and this one in physics. The university will look at it, those credits and tell, oh, okay, We'll take your 20 credits. Now, if you want to be an engineer, you need to do 80 other credits with this institution. And students will say, that's fine. I can do that 80 other credits. So this is just the number of credit, 20 and 60 and 80. How, uh, this is just the quantitative measurement. How about the quality? And to measure the quality of this, we get into the GPA system, the grade point average system that will give us the idea about the number is credit, 30 credits, 40 credits, 60. Now, when we go talk about the GPA, we talk about the quality. They said, okay, this student uh, is done with the 40 credits. 
graduate. That's fine. Now, how about the quality? The quality that measures in GPA, the grade point average. Now, how does we decide or determine uh, this GPA? So now let's get into this one. To determine the GPA, usually the professor or the class or college or university assign the letter grade to the student. Here in the United States, like letter grades A, B, C, D, E, and F. F means not passing, failing grade. So that will give us idea about the quality, the quant uh, qualitative measurement of the student. So now we are dealing with two things, credit, just the numbers, 40 credits, 50 credits, graduate. How about the quality I graduated? Uh, then you need to look for the GPA, grade point average. And I'll ex try to explain if the time permits um, about the grade point average. Uh, let's see how it goes later on. Uh, I was talking about the letter grade, A, B, C, D, E, F. And when I was talking about the letter grade, uh, let's go a little off track, just have a little fun. Uh, a student came to home on the day of the report card. It means they got their progress report like A grade or B grade and so on. And the student is asking his dad, dad, that says what? I got my report card, I got my progress report. Oh, what did you got in all your credit classes? And the student says that, oh dad, my all grades are wet, W-E-T, wet. And the parent said, what do you mean by all grades are wet, W-E-T, wet? And the student says that in light mode, below C level. And just the joke, but I'm just trying to tell you that GPS system has to deal with the letter grades. Uh, it depends upon the university, college, school, which letter grades they want to go. Usually here in the United States, they go with A, B, C, D, E, and F. F means usually it is a failing grade, but even it varies from uh, institute to institute. All right, now let's come back again to the GPA. Now the GPA has its own range. Here in the United States, most of the universities goes with the range of zero to four. That, okay, my GPA is 3.5, my GPA is 3.72, my GPA is 3.92 and so on. Uh, not necessarily, it can be the scale of zero to five. It varies from country to country, nation to nation, but usually uh, in most of the cases in United States, they go with the scale zero to four scale. And in some institutions, they go up to zero to five scale. Now I'm trying to explain you uh, the average GPA. I, I, I can see that time is running out, but I'll try to be quick, as quick as I can, and I'll do my best to explain about the average. So let's try to understand uh, the GPA system. Uh, semester one, and in the one semester, a student is taking four courses. Each course is worth of four credit. Four credit Hindi, four credit English, four credit of maths, four credits of music class, say for example. So four, 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 the student is studying for 16 credits or 16 credit hours for the semester. So if the student finishes all four courses at the end of semester, what he or she gets, the student will get four times four, 16 credits. Again, quantitative, done. Now, how about the quality? The students get A in this, A in this, A in this, A in this, all four A's. The GPA of student is four, 
if it is the scale of 0 to 4, all A's, GPA is 4. Second semester, again, student decided to take other four classes. Uh, the student is taking chemistry class, the psychology class, the physical education class, the reading class. Each class worth four credits. So at the end of second semester, four, 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 student will get 16 credits quantitative. How about GPA? Say for example, the students get all B's in the second semester, B here, B here, B here, B here. So GPA for the second semester is uh, three. Now first semester, the GPA is four. Second semester, GPA is three. Then what is the average of GPA, the, aver the grade point average, the cumulative? It is three between three and four, three point five. That is called cumulative GPA. Means all the classes student has taken as of today, and usually it is done by the computer system. We don't need to get into that statistics, uh, statistics a lot. Uh, usually, this average can be calculated with many softwares are available and so on and when we talk about the average when i was talking about the first semester gpa four the second semester gpa three the average gpa is 3.5 the community uh, average gpa is 3.5 for the entire uh, graduation or whatever two hour scores or two semester scores that's the average when i was talking about average uh, something was striking in my mind that statistics is always very good, but sometimes it maybe gives us some funny things. So let me say you a couple of funny things about the statistics. Uh, in light mode, we say that, okay, uh, if somebody's head is on the ice, the foot or feet is on the hot plate or in the heat, and we place the thermometer on the stomach, and we say that, oh, this person on average is very happy. So this is something kind of fun about statistics. The another example of the fun of the statistics is uh, in one city or, yeah, I think one city, uh, the mayor was talking to the citizens that, oh, we have a certain disease going on and now the death rate has decreased from 3% to 2%. And one person, one citizen raised hand and said, Honorable Mayor, I know that the death person has decreased from 3% to 2%. That is a good news. But whatever my family member died is 100% died. It's the sensitivity of statistics. Uh, I think. Uh, we are almost running out of the time. So I think I try to give you idea, a little idea about two things only. Number one, credit. Number one, GPA. Credit has to deal with the numbers that, okay. I'll just summarize, try to summarize this as much as I can quickly. And let's take an example of the college. In the college, uh, you require 40 credits to be a graduate. Uh, so to be graduate or undergraduate and once you uh, take this class that class your total is 40 your graduate 10 quantity you got the sale from the university that you you are graduated from this and if somebody wants to look at the quality that okay you graduate that's fine good you got the certificate but how about the quality then you look for the gpa grade point average to figure it out that how many A's are there, how many B's are there. It just gives you just one number from zero to four. The GPA is 2.5 and GPA is 3.9. And you, you tell about the quality of all the classes the student took. Uh, so I think that's pretty much for today. Uh, thank you. Thank you all for listening to me. Namaskar, friends. I would like to thank you, all of you, 
आप सभी इस कोर्स में जुड़े इसलिए आप सभी का एच आर डी सी गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी की ओर से तहे दिल से हार्दिक धन्यवाद करती हूँ प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर महेश राजीव गुरु जी जो आज के हमारे रिसोर्स पर्सन थे आई एम श्योर दैट यू यू हैड वंडरफुल टाइम बट है उनको भी मैं तहे दिल से उनका भी धन्यवाद करती हूँ आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक यू प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर महेश राजे गुरु जी जैसे मैंने उनके परिचय में बताया था जस नाउ ही इज एट यू एस ए और वहाँ पे वो अपनी अपना जो ये एजुकेशनल एक्सपीरियंस है उसके तौर पे वहाँ पे अभी हमारी एकेडमिक्स में विभिन्न यूनिवर्सिटीज में अपनी सेवाएं दे रहे तो ऐसे विद्वान पर्सनालिटी ने अपना समय हमारे इस कोर्स को दिया उसके लिए उनका एच आर डी सी गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी की ओर से तह दिल से धन्यवाद करती हूँ बिकॉज ऑफ कोरोना फ्रेंड्स स्टे होम स्टे से आप सभी का आपके परिवारजनों का स्वास्थ्य बना रहे ऐसा ऐसी प्रार्थना के साथ थैंक यू थैंक यू वन एंड ऑल